we're rolling? We are rolling. All right. You know what? Now that you've said that, <laughs> the universe <laughs> makes it. Yes, we are rolling. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm Lynn Fairley, and this is uh, Journey Wade Hack, who is really a great cameraman and editor and documentarian. We started the Rose Wall because we're not on the red carpet as we are normally in the Santa Barbara International Film Festival. Tonight, actually today, which is April 5th, 2021, we would have been on the red carpet pretty much all day because mm -hmm. we would have had to be there early in Santa Barbara, California at the Arlington Theater um, to see Carrie Mulligan live at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. Remember that one day when we had Glenn Close and we had to do, do something that same night? Oh yeah, yeah. plenty of full days with the festival. Really full right days. Festival. And I'm saying that because later on this evening we're going to come back together and uh, talk about the Artisans Award. Mm -hmm. And those are the people like Journey behind the scene that really make it work, especially when the camera is rolling. There you have it. <laughs> <laughs> So we just finished watching the interview that uh, Pete Hammond did with Carrie Mulligan for the Santa Barbara International, uh, what's called Vanguard Award, Cinema Vanguard Award. Now that award has, uh, the previous honorees for that award include Laura Dern, Michael B. Jordan, we interviewed him. Mm -hmm. Willem Dafoe, we interviewed him. Casey Affleck, Michelle Williams, Rooney Mara, Remember her? Mm -hmm. Eddie Redmayne and Felicity Jones, they were lovely. Uh, Martin Scorsese, we interviewed and we saw Leonardo DiCaprio that night because he gave Martin Scorsese his award for um, Lifetime Achievement. Mm -hmm. Amy Adams, Jean Dujardin, remember the French couple early, early on in our years? Uh, We've had hundreds of we interviews. We really have. So yeah. Bernice Bejo, Nicole Kidman, Peter Sarsgaard, Christopher Waltz, Vera Farmiga, I'm not sure I said that right, Farmiga, Karen Scott Thomas, Stanley Tucci, and the ever so gorgeous Ryan Gosling, who, whose interview I didn't really enjoy. I don't think he it did either, but that's another story. They're so brief. <laughs> yes, yeah. very brief. Um, so uh, she, Carrie Mulligan, has already received significant recognition recognition for this this horror film it's really a horror film dark comedy if you will as her role as a woman hell-bent on a twisted path of revenge and promising young woman and if you haven't seen it see it uh, and guys here's a warning if uh, you haven't seen it and you see it you may never date again or at least go to a nightclub I'm gonna set my phone down there for a second I don't need it now um, Okay, the, the, the brief, um, let's say the synopsis of the film, is that uh, this is a revenge for a rape of her very best friend, Nina, while they were both attending university as med students, medical students. And Carrie Mulligan plays Casey, uh, who's a prize-winning student there, and goes to the dean, who's a woman, demanding to know why Nina's assault was never ever investigated and was told, well, what do you want me to do? Ruin a boy's life every time we get an accusation like this. Mm -hmm. So what she does to the dean is just great. Uh, I'm not gonna give it away, but that's the trailer we saw during the um, yeah. The uh, interview we were watching here live, we, we get to see, as press, we get to see these interviews occurring live. Uh, it's not the same as the 101, but it's a longer interview and it's really in interesting to watch uh, people in their, their homes or in a hotel room, as was the case with her. And during this interview, the phone rang a couple of times. <laughs> People drained to call Carrie Mulligan. That's how popular she is. Very. Yeah. She's the it girl right now. So when you saw that trailer, among so many others, because they, what they do in these interviews is they do a uh, sort of a collage, a montage, if you will, of all their work, starting from the very beginning, and hers was in 2008 or nine, The uh, Education, which is a wonderful film. That was her breakout role. Uh, what did you think of what she did, without giving it away too much, mm -hmm. to the Dean as a character building moment where 
You're just meeting her in the beginning of the film. And you recognize in that moment when she's confronting the dean and scaring the heck out of her, that she, well, there's revenge there. There's regret too, because there's a little twist in the, in the film, I'm not gonna say, uh, that involves her almost, uh, mm, I'd say betrayal of her friend in a sense. Mm. Mm. What did you think of that scene in terms of character building? Because this is when you begin to realize Carrie's on a mission, Cassie, I should say, which is the, mm. uh, the, the character's, character's name. name. Yeah. What did you think of that? Were you like stunned? Uh, impressed, really. Um, you know, I have to see the film in full disclosure, but, uh, but it was a very compelling preview, and um, I'll be interested to see how they handle the rest of the the issue that they're exploring in the story, but um, you know, on a personal level, it's um, it's nice to see people able to take what can be abstract discussions and bring them bring them right home for someone. And, and you know, yeah. that's a good point because um, I think uh, Peter Hammond, who was the interviewer, the host, mm -hmm. um, made that point that we really haven't seen uh, rape on on college and university campuses. Is, often been portrayed as the butt of a joke. Yeah, or I think Carrie Mulligan herself Mary was, Carrie yeah. said that, yeah, right, that and, it, and it was nice, to your point, it was nice to see that uh, it's it's not, in, in this case at all, it, mm -hmm. it's finally the victim's point of view, mm -hmm. but it's actually not the victim in this case, because Carrie Mulligan playing Cassie is the person, um, it's, it's revenge. It's out and out revenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and well, and you know, with with uh, victim in a traditional sense, that word brings to mind the person whose body was actually uh, harmed. But um, I, I think, in a way, she is a victim, being being a loved one of someone who something terrible and violent happens to. You know that uh, that can certainly ripple out. And she missed that. She mentioned that too in the interview. I'm talking about Carrie Mulligan. In that, this does include. Uh, what happens to the loved ones in, in situations like this when they when they do suffer as much as the victim uh, maybe personally psychologically socially in some cases I would imagine even in some cities smaller towns where maybe the whole family is disgraced for example sometimes yeah I mean and even without comparing the suffering it's it's clear that it is significant and it is um, harmful very harmful. Very. Mm -hmm. So it was about time that this this topic was explored this way, from really a woman's point of view. And a woman wrote it, Emerald Fennell, the wonderful director. We get to um, inter partake in the interviews of the directors a little bit later on in the week, so we'll get back to Emerald Fennell, who you may have seen in The Crown, in the TV uh, series on Netflix, The Crown, she plays. Camilla Parker Bowles at one point. She does a really good job. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, really, really does. Um, the Crown is um, another topic. I almost went there. <laughs> <laughs> but she's brilliant in The Crown, but she's also an amazing writer and director and produced this film of, with Carrie Mulligan. She was the co-producer of this film. And it's an original screenplay. That's where I was going with this. Emerald Fennell is uh, up for an Oscar along with Carrie Mulligan for Best Actress, but for this movie as mm. an original screenplay. So uh, it, it is, it's, and she had it in her head as a whole piece by the time she pitched it to Carrie Mulligan, uh, according to Carrie. Did you, did you get that impression that she had the whole story in her head the way it was gonna go from start to finish? Yeah, and I think uh, in the interview, Carrie Mulligan alluded to the fact that um, you know they were they were trying to make a film about the culture around these issues, and that they and their generation had grown up with um, with as you as you alluded to before it being the butt of jokes, and and so I think um, it would make sense that it came all from from a certain life experience or swimming in a certain ocean of, of a cultural experience. Yeah, excellent. That's right. Uh, it's a uh, very devastating, oh my gosh, and there's a very tough resolution at the end. If you haven't seen it, we're not going to give it away. There is such a shocking ending. It's a twist that you really don't expect. 
We love those. We gotta get the eyebrows going. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you okay. go. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So, I think y- you might you might uh, if you ever saw Basic Instinct with uh, Sharon Stone. Uh, to me, it's it's better than that, and it's a modern day sort of version of that that type of thriller um, horror film. It's not just a drama; it's a horror film. Mm. And uh, we thought it was quite funny that Pete Hammond uh, summed it up as what was That's his? It's a hard souffle to bake. Something. Yeah, not that. an easy souffle to bake. Yes. Just what a funny moment that was in the mm-hmm. interview by Pete Hammond. But he's a great interviewer, and he's got this wonderful laugh. Mm-hmm. It probably will be up soon, so you can see it yourselves uh, on YouTube, probably sbiff.org. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's also the website where you can find out what else is going on with the Santa Barbara International Film Festival, as well as watch some really astonishing uh, documentaries. Um, Let's see. Um, by the way, this is only shot in three weeks. Oh, and the trailer's online, of course. You can see the trailer. Mm. And um, there's a couple of wonderful things coming up for uh, Carrie Mulligan herself. And that is uh, this coming Saturday. That's April 10th, right? Saturday the oh, 10th, I believe Don't it make is. me do math. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Probably, yeah. It's a camera work that he does best. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, this coming Saturday, Saturday Night Live, April 10th, 2021, Carrie Mulligan gets to host Saturday Night Live, so that's exciting. Um, we, we heard a lot about all of the films she's made and, and the role she's played in the different things. It's just a stunning body of work in just a short amount of time. 11 years and she's always made really really wonderful choices in her films mm-hmm. uh, one coming up with bradley cooper she told uh, pete hammond a very interesting story about how um when she was on stage she's done tremendous stage work tremendous stage work a uh, safety curtain came down upon her head and she managed to finish the play and was in and in the audience was her friend bradley cooper who came backstage to see her in her dressing room on the floor, Concussed. crying her eyes out, just mm-hmm. in so much pain. Concussed, yes. Yeah. And he picked her up and bundled her up, took her over to urgent care. And from that was born a new role she's going to play as his wife in the upcoming movie that Bradley Cooper's made called Maestro. Mm. And that's also got, I think that's for release a little bit later in this year because they haven't actually started filming that one but um look it up online maestro you know it's uh, the italian word for um maestro kind of master yeah yeah. Yeah. okay Uh, about a very famous uh conductor so that's where we're going to see her next after we see her on saturday night live are you going to watch saturday night live this week i might yeah i think so i'm looking forward to it and I want to mention one more thing about uh, Carrie Mulligan. She's done some remarkable charity work um, since 2012. Uh, she's been a, a spokesman for an organization uh, having to do with educating people on, on Alzheimer's. Mm. Her grandmother died of uh, complications uh, around Alzheimer's because it's, it's not something you die from. It's the complications mm-hmm. due to Alzheimer's, like my own father did mm-hmm. on Valentine's Day a few years ago. So I was pretty impressed that uh, she spent a lot of her time and, uh, and money helping to educate the public on, on what it's like to be a family member um, uh, dealing with loved ones and Alzheimer's, mm-hmm. as well as an amazing charity called War Child. So uh, all of these things are are really, really interesting. This woman is only 35. I think she'll be 36 May 28th this year. Mm. And yeah, and she's already done. Yeah, and she's already done really, really remarkable work. Now, do you have a favorite film of hers? Because I know you haven't seen them all. And I, um, I also 
promise not to ask you a whole lot of questions about the That's films right. you've seen, but it seemed like you'd seen maybe Shame. Um, I have seen uh, one that really stood out to me was Never Let Me Go, mm. um, which I saw and was very disturbed by, but in the best way you can be disturbed by a film. It, it was, I thought, very well done and, and heart-wrenching. And I'm glad work. you said that because most of her films are really disturbing. Inside um, um, Lewin Davis. Lewin Davis, disturbing. This, disturbing. Mm -hmm. The Dig was not. Now, The Dig is also something that came out on Netflix uh, tw end of 2020. Wonderful film with Rafe Fiennes. Saying that right? Ray Fines, I Ray think. Ray Fines. Yeah. Uh, a true story, actually, about a treasury that was uncovered uh, post World War II in uh, London mm -hmm. and then donated eventually to the British Museum. So she's she did that film back to back. She did Promising Young Woman and then did The Dig, which is 180 degrees from the character in Promising One. You know what? She is really in real life. The promising young woman. Yeah, well, she has such range, incredible range. Really it's incredible. Really something to admire. She's also a singer. Mm -hmm. Her her rendition of New York, New York, apparently is up there with Frank Sinatra, according to Pete Hammond. Mm -hmm. And Liza Minnelli. And Liza Minnelli. I mean, that's that's when we see talent like this, because we do, we get to see a lot of this. It's always astonishing to me, and I and I think it is to you too. That we find out they dance, they sing, they do theater, they do film, they do charity work. Mm -hmm. Almost always we find that out. Yeah. It's remarkable, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Quite, quite the range outside of their careers even. You know, and I, and I also, because I've known Journey for, oh, I don't know, 10 years now, we, I think we calculated, right? Something like that, yeah. yeah. And I personally think you have that range, that type of range and I can't wait to see what you do next. That's very sweet. Thank you, Lynn. I'm, I think you, you have an incredible range as well. So. Oh, I just it's... talk a lot. That's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> and so thank you very much, Journey. Thank you very much for watching. And you have a parting shot? Oh, just if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, Lynn Fairley Media. And thanks so much for watching. And share it. Yeah. Bye. Bye.